Welcome back to Cursed Collection. Today we will dive into the chilling history of Penhurst Asylum, also known as the Haunted Hospital. For over half a century, Penhurst Asylum housed individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, but the conditions and treatment they faced were nothing short of horrific. We will explore the story of Penhurst Asylum, uncovering the secrets within its walls and the haunting legacy it left behind. So sit back, grab a blanket, and prepare to be shocked and captivated by this spine-tingling tale. <laughs> Penhurst opened its doors in November of 1908, but within a short period it was overcrowded due to pressure to take on not just the mentally and physically challenged, but also immigrants, criminals, and orphans who could not be placed elsewhere. At Penhurst, patients were divided into several broad categories. One was classified as either imbecile or insane according to their level of mental ability. The patient could be classified as either epileptic or healthy physically. Some of the prisoners were well served in Penhurst. Some high functioning patients got the care and therapy required to get ready for life outside the hospital. During its years of operation, over 10,600 people lived at Penhurst, many passing their entire lives within its bounding walls. But like many institutions housing people with disabilities, Penhurst eventually became a place of abuse and neglect. <laughs> The doctors showed no mercy between guests or their patients, pulling people from the line and attempting to restrain them to operating tables while threatening to stab them with giant needles. Additionally, some patients had such severe mental impairments that they would hurt themselves at the slightest provocation. One of the patients would charge head first into the walls. Such patients most likely required restraint for safety, a history of being understaffed, dirty, and violent. Nine employees were charged with various offenses in 1983, including slapping and abusing patients, some who were in wheelchairs, and organizing patient fights. Eugene Statler, 15, died from shock in a cerebral hemorrhage on January 2, 1937. William McGraw, a 24-year-old employee at Penhurst, was questioning Statler about what he thought was 95 cents that went missing. According to four additional male residents, McGraw allegedly instructed Statler to put on boxing gloves as punishment. McGraw struck Statler's head against a wall numerous times. McGraw asserts that he was questioning Statler when he got a call. When he got back, Statler wasn't moving. The charges against McGraw included manslaughter. At the time of his passing, Statler had worked at Penhurst for six years. Cruel punishments were expected at the facility. Overworked staff responded to unruly patients by drugging them into submission or chaining them to their beds. Other residents were isolated for such long periods that they regressed and lost their will to speak, fight, or live. One particularly harsh rule chastised patients for biting. When a patient bites someone the first time, they are reprimanded. But if it happened again, the patient was sent to a dentist who would pull all his teeth. Thousands of teeth were removed in a rusty dentist chair in the tunnels beneath the Penhurst complex. Not all of the residents were abandoned by their family members. When loved ones visited, they were appalled to find their children bruised and uncared for. Even in 1912, there were reports on the poor quality of treatment, but it was quickly apparent that outsiders could do little to help and patients continued to suffer from abuse, rape, and even death at the hands of staff and other patients. The society continued to turn a blind eye to the horrors of this state-run institution. Many people think that those who suffered and passed away in this facility still exist in this place in the spirit. Ghosts were commonly believed to be the spirits of those who have unfinished business remaining in our mortal world. Many ghost stories tell of people with a tortured past who haunt the living to repay others for the harm done to them. Following this logic, high schoolers looking for a spooky Friday night and professional paranormal experts alike have headed to the Penhurst State School and Hospital site since it was abandoned. The sprawling network of buildings and tunnels were left abandoned, and tortured spirits grew restless within the confines of Penhurst. Staff and caretakers of the property say that the facilities and the underground tunnel network are haunted by the ghosts of the patients who suffered and died there. Reports of slamming doors, disembodied footsteps and voices, 
and sounds of vomiting and crying are heard from seemingly empty rooms. Some witnesses have even reported the apparition of a little girl roaming the hospital, looking perplexed and a bit lost. The sound of children playing and crying are also common occurrences. Thank you for watching. Please support me with a like and subscribe and we'll continue to get more content released. Beginning with the Mental Health and Mental Retardation Act in Pennsylvania in 1966, multiple pieces of legislation were passed that ultimately resulted in Pennhurst's demise. This law permitted providing services outside of institutions, i.e. in the community. Reporter Bill Baldini publishes five-part Pennhurst series, Suffer the Little Children, in 1968. And when we began to shoot, my team felt embarrassed. They were getting sick from what they witnessed, so it was difficult for me to keep them on the job, recalls Baldini. In 1968, Philadelphia local television broadcasted his five-part series. The allegations feature pictures of malnourished, naked people either curled up in balls or rocked back and forth to their internal rhythms. The kids' beds were secured with ropes. Baldini is still unable to forget. Imagine a ward of infants and kids from six months to five years old, says Baldini. Eighty of them were contained in metal cages. Every day, all day, they had to take care of them. These people spent days sleeping in their waste. The circumstances at Penhurst were specified and deemed undisputed in the case. The inmates at Penhurst were frequently physically assaulted or given drugs by staff members making the conditions unsafe and unsuitable for the habitation of the mentally handicapped. The court ruled that several residents of Penhurst's physical, intellectual, and emotional abilities had declined. While living at Penhurst, people experience intellectual and behavioral regression. Rather than gaining self-care abilities, they lose them. Overcrowding inwards, a lack of privacy, a lack of training programs, and an oppressive environment cause regression and maladaptive behavior. Even though she could walk, one resident with an intellectual disability who was also blind used a wheelchair. Staff allegedly did this so they would constantly be aware of her location. Many residents suffered bodily damage from staff abuse or negligence, including fatalities. A resident over 18 who wanted to depart was not allowed to do so. Staff would claim that the residents were not prepared to re-enter the community or that there was nowhere else to go. The court then compelled the occupants to remain. Residents are not dangerous to society and are not suffering from mental or emotional illness. A federal judge ordered the 1,230 people still living at Penhurst in 1978 to relocate into community living arrangements nearby. The closure of Penhurst is mandated by the final Penhurst v. Halderman settlement from 1984. The only structure to have been destroyed was Building K. Although no one is inside the Philadelphia building, loud voices have been heard. After years of persistent overcrowding and patient maltreatment, the enormous Penhurst State School and Hospital was closed in 1987. The building still exists and is now a haunted house. The haunted attraction starts in the administrative building and even takes visitors into parts of the original morgue and tunnel network. The Penhurst Asylum also offers a ghost hunt that passes through the Mayflower building. On the lower, actual property, a haunted attraction launched in October 2010. In its nearly 80 years of operation, Penhurst saw over 10,500 visitors. The site is home to more than 20 structures. Businessman Richard Chikijian bought Penhurst in 2008. He turned the hospital and school into a Halloween attraction in 2010 and named it Penhurst Asylum. The Haunted House is a joint venture with Randy Bates, who manages the Bates Motel and Haunted Hayride, another haunted attraction in Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. The original name of the haunted mansion was Penhurst Institute of Fear. Each year, the attraction earns around $1 million in revenue. Visitors first entered a museum that had images and facts about the institution. They went inside the haunted house, furnished with grisly props, bloody dental patients, and pieces of the original morgue. The underground tunnel network that formerly connected the buildings is where the last trek takes place. Screams flooded the total blackness that seemed to go on forever. The sounds of local heavy metal bands greeted visitors as they left. 
With his mates, Scott Clower, 19, drove up from Delaware. Before there was a haunted home, according to him, Penhurst was known for being spooky. Adventurous paranormal investigators still explore the grounds today and experience multiple hauntings each visit. Long, dark hallways would echo knocking sounds at the end to a locked door. Voices that try to communicate from the other side for attention. One team reported that while they were standing in the middle of a dark hallway, they asked for the ghost's presence by requesting any object to be rolled out. After a second of silence, a pebble is heard rolling along the floor. And that concludes our journey through the dark history of Penhurst Asylum, the Haunted Hospital. We hope you've gained a better understanding of the atrocities within its walls and the long-lasting impact it had on the lives of those who were once confined there. While the asylum may no longer be in operation, the memories and stories of those who lived and died within its walls live on. Many people think that those who suffered and passed away in this facility still exist in this place in the spirit. So if you had to spend one night, would it be here at the Penhurst Asylum or Queen Mary? Let us know in the comments. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. We appreciate you being here and we hope to see you back soon for more real haunted stories from the past.